Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. In today's video, I'm gonna show you four AI-powered tools to help you get your photos cleaned up and fixed a little bit faster than you might be able to do on your own, and in some cases, even a little bit better than you can do on your own. This is gonna be a rapid fire video, so if you want more details on any of these tools, let me know in the comments below and I can make a more elaborate tutorial. And if you like any of the titles or effects you're seeing, stick around for the next video. I'm gonna show you how you can get them for your Final Cut Pro projects. Uh, let's jump into it. Now this first AI tool I wanna to show you is a little bit more niche, but I wanna show it first because I think it shows off how impressive some of the results you can get are. Now if you've ever shot 8-bit, maybe difficult lighting conditions, you might notice banding in your colors. And it can be really painful to clean up. But with Pixelmator's amazing debanding tool, you can get really great results really fast. And although that might not seem impressive, let me zoom in here and show you some of these finer details where you might not have even noticed that there was banding occurring and how well it cleaned them up. Now maybe that example doesn't impress you, but let me show you something a little bit more difficult to pull off. So in this example, we have the obvious banding in the background, but if we zoom in on the face, you'll notice there was banding there that was difficult to make out with the naked eye. And what's more, when it cleaned up the banding, it also managed to maintain some of the subtlety of color that happens around the edges of the shadow. This is where some of the subsurface scattering in his ear impacted the color of the pixels. Really amazing that it's picking up on all of these details when most of it was completely lost due to the banding artifacts. This next AI powered tool that I wanna show you is one that I've shown off multiple times on this channel before, mostly because it's so useful for YouTubers. We do this in thumbnails all the time where we cut out our subject and place them over a background. Now you can see with a fairly simple background, you get the results you expected, a really clean cut. Now you might be wondering, what about something a little bit more complex? Well, go to this one that has a little bit of depth of field to it, and you can see not only does it cut out the background, but you can even see here for a moment where it is decontaminating the color. So it's recognizing that the color from the background is bleeding into other things and doing its best to clean those up as well. Super resolution is probably the tool that most people have heard of because a lot of times the issue they're running into is they have a really low resolution photo. One thing I look for when using super resolution is there are certain kinds of artifacting that get better results than others. So in my opinion, these types of hard edged JPEG vector art artifacts get cleaned up actually really well. And I really like this for this use case. I also like this normal JPEG artifacting that you see which is really common. If you zoom in and really start pixel peeping, it looks a little bit stable diffusion-y where things are a little liquidy, but when you're looking at it at any normal zoom level, you can see it looks really realistic and really natural. So that's why I've got super resolution at number two. I don't use it often, but when I do, it's usually the thing that's saving the project. I'm saving the ML Enhance feature as my number one AI feature because it's so flexible, I end up using it all the time. Let me give you an easy example for those that haven't seen it in action. We've got this great looking photo of Golden Gate, and with one click, it turns it into a really fantastic photo. That's what most people are used to. But let me give you a different example. This one is a really interesting one because when I see it, the immediate thing that stands out to me is the white balance is all wrong. So when we click on ML Enhance, you get a great photo, don't get me wrong. But what I like to do is come in here and just do ML on the white balance. I could click around and figure that out for myself, but it's just so much faster. And then I can get on with the edit and then get the rest of the photo edited just the way that I want. And it's because you could apply each of these adjustments selectively, it makes it a really powerful tool to get you started or to do the cleanup operation that it does well and you don't need to waste your time on. That's it for this one. Hopefully you found all that helpful. If you did, throw me a like and subscribe. Your support means the world to me. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna do some follow-up videos on how to get these sweet titles in Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion, so stick around if you'd like to see more of that, as well as some more Pixelmator Pro tutorials. All right, we'll catch you on the next one.